The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, phenomenal women. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Black Hollywood Live's Phenomenal Women. I have an amazing lady with me today, Diane Valentine, who is a celebrity wedding planner to the stars. And she's fabulous. She looks gorgeous. And let me just tell you who are the names that she has done. She's done Usher, Martin Lawrence, Basketball Wives, Jennifer Williams, Kellis, Tony Braxton, the famous Tony Braxton's wedding with the specific color that she wanted. <laughs> And the short-lived Evelyn Lozada and Chad Johnson, to name a few. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I am so Thank glad you. that you're here. So before we get into all of the fabulousness that you do with these weddings, because mm -hmm. we are in wedding season right now, how did you get started? Oh, gosh. <laughs> it feels like an eternity ago. Right. Uh, you know, I started my company when I was still in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I was just looking for a way to help pay my way through college. I knew I really didn't want to work for anyone else. Um, and so I started this company and really didn't know what I was doing. And it did. It took off. It helped pay my way through college. After college, I was going to go to law school so I could get a real job. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but while I was in college and running my company, I really just fell in love with love. Ah, you know what I mean? So I like to think that I didn't choose love, but love chose me. Right, right. So you started, how did you juggle in school and planning wedding? Because it's, right. it's so detail oriented. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. It can be overwhelming. Right. For sure. Well, you know, the thing I know about life is that we do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. And as women in particular, we are used to carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. So when we have a lot of responsibility, we just strap up and right. say, okay, let's get it done. Right. So now, when I look back on my life then, you know, and I think about everything that was going on, and I was a single mom at the age of 20. Mm. So I have really no idea how I just kind of made it all work. But every day it did right and usually when that happens it's your destiny and everything yes. just kind of falls into place yes yeah. i know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that love is absolutely my destiny mm -hmm. and you started and then all of a sudden layla rashawn comes into your life <laughs> how did that happen <laughs> so bizarre so bizarre so after i finished college i'm from the bay area so okay. i'm from oakland and after i finished college and had my company there i decided you know i've done all i can do here you know oakland's too small i need to move so in a matter of two weeks i picked up moved to los angeles and got a job got this real job right. at Warner Brothers Studios <laughs> mm -hmm. and I said you know I want to produce that's what I really want to do I want to work in film and television I want to produce and that was that and thankfully my reputation as a wedding planner and designer followed me to Los Angeles mm. so one day out of the blue Lila Rashawn calls me and a friend that I knew had told her about me and right. she was getting married and I'll never forget we met at Warner Brothers in my office <laughs> at Warner Brothers <laughs> and talked about her wedding and she was so sweet and she was so glamorous and she was so beautiful and she was so poised and I was just like oh my god there's <laughs> no way she's gonna hire me right. you know? I was like there's no way she's gonna hire me so we left the meeting and I didn't hear from her like sick for like six months Oh. But at the time she was working on that Oliver Stone big football movie mm -hmm. What was it called? Any Given oh, Sunday. Any Given Sunday. Any Given Sunday. She was working on <laughs> right. that. And so six months later, she called and she said, Valentine, are you ready? We only have four months. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and you're still working full time. <laughs> and I'm still working full time. <laughs> now, I wanted to go back to a comment that you that you just made yes. when you said Oakland was too small. Yes. And that's a proven example for our viewers who are watching and our listeners that 
you got to think big. Yes. And you thought big, and look at what attracted when you thought big. <laughs> yes. So yes. please do not think too small of yourself that whatever it is, you can think big, just go after it, because Diane Valentine here is an example of that. And, you know, you also have to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. See, comfort is a disease, a disease mm. that kills our dreams. Absolutely. When we are comfortable, we, we start accepting the status quo. We start saying, you know, the dreams that we have really aren't meant for us to have. And we just kind of wilt away. You yeah. know, we become powerless. We become fearful. We lose our voices. And it all dies long before we leave this earth. Absolutely. I love that. So let's go back to Leela Rashawn. You got a job. You got four <laughs> months to plan this amazing plan wedding. wedding. Yes. How did you do that? And <laughs> um, you just figured you it just out. Don't just don't sleep. Right? <laughs> you just don't sleep. She was amazing. Um, she really trusted me, even mm -hmm. though I was new to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I think she and I had a great initial connection. Mm -hmm. She trusted my vision, trusted my eye. Um, she was amazing. Antoine, you know, who has phenomenal taste, was amazing as well. And sh that was in the era when Miami was really big. So South Beach was just starting to take off in popularity for, you know, black Hollywood, mm -hmm. if you will. And so she had visions of the Delano Hotel and she wanted this all white wedding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so I got on a plane and I went to Miami and I said, OK, well, let me see what this Delano is all about. Wow. She didn't pay me to do that. She didn't ask me to do that. But that's me saying, if I'm going to be the best, yes. then I need to do whatever I need to do to make sure that I'm able to compete on a very high level. I love it. Um, and, you know, the rest was history. You know, at her wedding, it was the first wedding I had... I hired a musical director who came in and wrote a score for her wedding. Mm -hmm. um, we had a 40-piece orchestra. Mm. Um, Star Jones did the welcome. It was phenomenal. It really was phenomenal. And it was really game-changing. So all these years later, when people still refer to me or ask me about my work, so many people go back to Leela and Antoine's wedding. Right. Because it was classic, but it was beautiful, and it was forward-thinking, and it was modern, but it was old world at the same time. So... Good memories. Good, I good know, memories. right? Good yes. memories. Good memories. Now, with that wedding, that literally catapult you yes. to fame, stardom, and recognition. It did. How did you handle that? What advice do you have? Because it, sometimes it happens so sudden. Yes. And you're just not ready. Yes. So how did you handle it? Well, you know, I think... As you said, sometimes things happen suddenly, and they do. Mm -hmm. And so, so many people don't prepare before they engage. Mm. You know, you say you want a great career, you say you want greatness, you say you want more clients than you can stand, but when they come, are you really ready to right. handle that? You know, and so for me, I really always believed in Diane. You know, I always believed that the world was really, you know, at my footsteps mm -hmm. and I could do anything I wanted to do. So before Leela even came calling, I had already established who the team was. I had already established who were the best vendors in LA, mm -hmm. um, who were the carpenters and set designers and all those people that I wanted to work with. Right. And it's funny, true story, I have to share this. Yes, true please story. share. <laughs> because before Leela even came into my life, I met with five top florist in LA. Five, I won't mention names, mm -hmm. but five of the very biggest florists in LA. And they're all five are still in existence. And I met with all of them. I told them I was new to LA. And at that time, my dear friend, Colin Cowie, he mm -hmm. was the bar, you know, he was the bar that was set. Yes. So my conversation with all of them was, my name is Diane Valentine. I'm going to be the black Colin Cowie. Mm. A little younger, a little hipper, you know, a little funkier, but that's who I am and that's who I'm going to be. And of the five floors that I met with, four of them laughed in my face. <gasps> they laughed at me sitting across from me. Oh. They laughed at me. And the the final florist that I met with, which was a company called Silver Birches in Pasadena, and I told him the same thing. You know, I'm Diane Valentine. I'm going to be the black Colin Cowie. And he said, and his name was Walter Hubert, and Walter said, and I'd love to help you get there. Now, I wish I could just high-five you across this, <laughs> <laughs> across this desk. I love that. That's yeah. an amazing story. Yeah. So, you know, I think... You know, when you think about, you know, achieving your goals and believing in yourself, it's really about taking action to that. Yes. It's taking action to that. It's not enough to just think, oh, one day I'm going to do all this great thing. But you have to walk in that presence of where you see yourself. Right. You know what I mean? It's not about just thinking it, but I was declaring it boldly. 
and I'm still declaring all these phenomenal things I want for my life. Now, the journey, I think, is a little bit harder now right? <laughs> than it was <laughs> 20 years ago, right. but it's still possible. You know, it's still possible. And to this day, every single one of those four floors that laughed in my face have all come back to me and said, hey, Diane, hey, you know, nice to meet you. I'd really love to work with you. Had forgotten all about mm. our initial exchange. Mm -hmm. You never know where someone's going. You never know. Never know. Never know. And you just have to kind of go, you know what, let's let's take this journey together. Yeah. Because when I'm successful, you're successful. Absolutely. When you're successful, I'm successful. Absolutely. That's all about And I've made business. a lot of people a lot of money yes. in this industry. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> now from that, you have, you love big, you love flair. Yes. And where do you get your inspiration from when you do weddings? Oh. Gosh, it comes from so many places. Mm -hmm. I would say my primary source of inspiration is traveling mm -hmm. um, because I'm so drawn to architecture and, and old world design. And I'm always drawn to old world artisans and wanting to understand how they did things the way they did them. And, you know, like buildings in Europe are such an amazing source of inspiration to me because these are, you know, buildings and cathedrals that were built in the 1500s with no power tools, with, you know, no cranes, with, you know, no textbooks to teach people right. how to carve the stone. And you have all this beauty, I think, that's been left behind. Um, so that's my biggest source of inspiration. And then secondary, it would be fashion because fashion gives us so many cues about where the world is going you right. know designers like tom ford is my i love tom my ford. ultimate source of inspiration but also you know victor and wolf out of yeah. paris and you know philippe tracy out of london and these are all just phenomenal incredible artists i think that are able to create what they create um, in the comfort of their own private cocoon, so to speak. Right. And they don't care what the world thinks of it. And I admire that so much because so much of the work that I do is for other people. Yes. And so it's refreshing to just, you know, be able to hone in and study designers that say, I'm going to create what I want. Mm -hmm. And either the world will like it or they won't. Right. But I'm going to be true to who I am. Right, right. I love that. Now, you you don't just do weddings. You've expanded yes. from just doing weddings. Yes. And you're all about lifestyle. Yes. And so it spans from uh, interior designing mm -hmm. to designing invitations to now you're designing hotel spaces. Yes. How mm -hmm. did you get into that? And I just love how you just evolve. You can go from one thing and yes. then just transform and just build a whole empire with it. Yes. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> Isn't that right? <laughs> But accomplishable, but yes, right? Yes, it is, it is certainly <laughs> yeah. doable. You know, I started doing interior design because after I would finish a wedding for a client, they would say, Diane, would you come and maybe you would do my bedroom? Because a lot of my clients were building homes mm -hmm. or buying homes in the mist. And so I'd do a room here and a room there. And then I went back to school and did some more training um, on architecture and fine art and furniture design, things like that. And then uh, about five years ago, I launched the interior design division of the company. Um, um, which has been amazing mm -hmm. because I think I'm not a trained interior designer by um, the discipline of education. Right. So my thinking is so different. You know, like people will come in a room and say, well, if you have a chair, you should have a table right next to it. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. Why right. would you do that? <laughs> what if the chair don't need a table? Right. What if it stand alone by itself? You know, so... I think my perspective has always been about breaking the rules, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever people said I couldn't do, I've always kind of used that to fuel me, to show people exactly what I can do. Right, right. Now, with that, is there a way that you can teach us who don't have an eye, <laughs> per se, <laughs> how to design? Because I know I struggle with, okay, how do I want to make my bedroom look? All right. Is there a, some advice you can give us who don't do it on a regular basis, but mm -hmm. can make our our living rooms look fabulous, mm -hmm. make our bedrooms mm -hmm. look fabulous. Mm -hmm. Is there some advice you can give us? Sure, sure. That's a great question mm -hmm. because I think DIY TV mm -hmm. and reality TV has kind of made everybody think they're a designer. Yes. Yes, and you're not. No, because and you it's get okay. Home, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I get home and I go, why do they say this is easy? It's okay. Because it's not easy. No, no. This purple and this white does not <laughs> mesh well. It does not work well together. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> um, so I kind of have three tips that I tell people when you're designing a space, whether it's a, you know at your home or your dinner table or your backyard, choose one piece that's going to be your anchor, mm -hmm. one piece that's going to be what I call your wow factor. And then you build the entire room around it, whether it's a sofa or a pillow or a throw or a great you know dish for your table. Use that as the inspiration to build upon completely. Right. Um, <laughs> two, I would say, do not be afraid of color. Yeah. So many people are afraid of color. I, just about every single home that I've ever designed, when I walked in the door, they had all white or all brown or all gray walls. Mm. So there's no color. People do not live in color. Mm -hmm. And I think you should embrace color. Um, however, you know, however you choose to, but embracing color, I think is really important. And then I think three, when you're trying to build a design for a room or a party or something, tell a color story. See, a few moments ago, you just mentioned purple and white. Right. See the huge contrast between purple and white. It's too stark oh. and it's harsh and it's jarring on the eye. But if you did purple and you did lavender and you did eggplant, mm. you know what I mean? And then you did a little... Um, 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 lost my thought. You throw in some shades of like blue, like periwinkle. Yes. Then you've now created a color story. Periwinkle. Instead, <laughs> see, this is why we need to hire you because I don't even know what periwinkle is. <laughs> it's like lavender with a little hint of blue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but you know, now you've tell now you're telling a color story. Okay. And so you're not you're not obsessed with oh my god, do these curtains match the throw pillows? Right. Because it doesn't have to match. But if it complements, then you've accomplished what you need to accomplish. Okay, so it doesn't have to match, but I can complement yes. my purple with my with my periwinkle. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or my periwinkle with my 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 uh, other colors and yes, stuff like that. Yes. Periwinkle, I love that name. <laughs> <laughs> so now I want to go back to weddings. Okay. One of the things that you know we just saw uh, Kim Kardashian get married yes. and it didn't have. I know. So beautiful. Wasn't that? Oh my God. So beautiful. How do you put on a production like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been wanting, I couldn't wait to have you in the uh, studio because it's, it's not just, you know, weddings used to be simple several, you right. know, a couple of years ago, you know, 20 years ago where you just walk down the aisle, you have your florist right. and, you know, you have your valet, but now it's a production. Yes, and to the absolutely. point now they even changed the name, it's event producer because you guys are now <laughs> producing. Yeah. And an event. Absolutely. How do you how do you manage all that? Um, <laughs> with a lot of people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> For one, it it takes an, a tremendous team. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure there were two to three hundred people working on that wedding easily. Yes. Easily. So one, you have to have a great team. You know, um, to help you do it, and you have to have um, leaders. You know leaders for specific areas within a production. So for me, everything we do, I'm a creative director, mm -hmm. right? So I design everything, I brainstorm, I come up with the concepts, I come up with the ideas. But then I've got, you know, like a lead event planner, and then I've got a lead carpenter, and then I've got a lead florist, and then I've got a lead person in design who specializes only in accessories. So it's really about creating an org chart you know, with a hierarchy and an right. org chart so that we can function as a team and everybody does their part. Right. You know, now I know I get a lot of uh, a lot of credit and a lot of <laughs> attention for a lot of Saturday nights, but it is absolutely not me alone. I, I, I just look at it. I'm sitting here like, okay, now you got to fly people in. Yes. You got to have a travel agent, yes. the hotels, yes. and now you got to have cranes to put yes. things in. And, yes. and it's just... And it's not always at your fingertips. You right. know, for example, when Evelyn and Chad got married a couple of years ago, we they got married on the island of St. Martin. And St. Martin kind of tourism board sold us that this was a play that was great, it was welcoming, we could do anything we wanted to do, we found this amazing estate that was to die mm -hmm. for. But there was no production elements on St. Martin. And we didn't know that until I got into it. So I had to bring in tenting, generators, and air conditioning all the way from Puerto Rico. And then from the U.S., from our production facilities here in L.A., because we designed and fabricated all of the custom elements, we had to ship two containers to St. Martin. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, it's great to be at these destinations, but a lot of time these destinations have underdeveloped industries. Yeah. And they aren't prepared for a, a Hollywood production. Right. To, to just come in. <laughs> right. You know? So with Kim and Kanye, I would, I'm sure the bulk of their 
resource and the bulk of their team was either from LA or from Paris. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that's a huge production. Maybe one day I'll have a production wedding or something like that. <laughs> Wasn't it pretty, though? It Can was. Can we just talk about how pretty it was? It was. Well, I loved oh my the gosh. wall of flowers. Yeah. And, and now we're, you know, since we are now in the Internet age mm -hmm. and everything is immediate to us, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, looking through magazines where we had to wait to the next, you know, uh, magazine comes out. Right. Now we can go online and just look and we can just have stuff. Okay, I like that. I like that. But now we're up we're up against the new, the biggest, the baddest thing. Right. And it almost takes away from what marriage is. Yeah. You're just all about the day and yeah. the event. Yeah. But it's like we're in competition with each other. Mm -hmm. And how do you, it seems like the celebrities are always trying to outdo other <laughs> celebrities on stuff. How do you keep up with that? How do you keep up with the trends? Because now we're in wedding season. Right. How do you keep up with, okay, that's no longer in season, but right. let's try this. And then the celebrity's like, oh my God, I love that. That's so different. That's so new. Right, right. That's so new age. Right. How do you do? Well, I have one very simple philosophy mm -hmm. is that I don't follow the trends. I set the trends. I don't really care what the industry is doing. <laughs> right. I don't care what's hot. I don't care what's the color of the moment. For me, it's about what do I feel? What kind of vibe am I getting from my client? What do I think is in her heart? How can I best tell her love story? Yes. Not how do I follow anybody's trends out here in this industry because I know that if we do all of those things, if I follow my gut, if I follow her heart, if I listen clearly, if I interpret her love story correctly, Exactly what we're doing for her is going to be the trend next year. Mm -hmm. And I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Diane, I love it. <laughs> now, what's next for you? Because I know you've, I mean, you've done television. You're yes. a speaker. You've, I, I watched you on I Do, with get to do oh, over on you. WeTV. And you also do speaking engagements mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then you also, of course, interior design and mm -hmm. you do hotels in addition to weddings. Mm -hmm. What's next for you? You know, uh, earlier this year, I kind of released a collection of products for the home called Diane Valentine Home. Okay. Um, and so it's a combination of some custom chargers and napkin rings and linen napkins and candles and really simple accessories that everybody can use at home, you know, for entertaining or what I like to call living well. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean, living well, I'm so surprised how many times I visit people's homes and I get a paper towel. Mm. I'm offered a paper towel with a meal instead of a linen napkin or um, a lot of my clients that are very, 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 very wealthy. You know, I'll go to their house for whatever, a meeting or, you know, to visit them and they'll be having a drink in like a red plastic cup. And I just think, oh, my gosh, <laughs> why don't people live well? Right. You know, in this huge palatial estate and all the money and 12 cars in the, you know, in the garage and you're really drinking out of a red plastic cup. But there's something about, I think, wealth and success that almost makes us feel a little guilty. So I think that red cup is a symbolization of, no, I'm really still the same person. Right. I'm still down to earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't changed at right. all. You know, and I just like, no, but you're tacky. Right. right. Yeah. I don't want a plastic cup. I don't drink in plastic cups at all. Right. So my line of products is really designed to help people live well. You know, and just get back to the core of the things I think our moms taught us, you know, how to be a lady and yes. how to entertain well and how to welcome people into your home and not offer them a paper towel with their meal. <laughs> and Simply. I'm laughing because I'm so guilty of that. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? Because it's like, oh, can I get a paper towel? And, yes. and we're so used yes. to it. But I think, is it because we just don't know? I think it's partly that we don't know and partly that we want to just, you know, kind of keep it real, so to speak, right. whatever that means. But I think it's, you know, I think it's a combination of the two. And I also think that people just don't necessarily invest in their home lives. Mm. You know, people will spend more money on a pair of Louboutins mm -hmm. shoes or a handbag than they will on um, some decent china or, you know, right. some, you know, like I don't have um, what I call special china. Right. In my house. I don't. I have lots of different patterns from Masoni to Versace um, to Hermes. And my husband and I, we use it every day. We don't save it for the holidays or we don't save it for our anniversary. Right. You just use it. We just use to... it every day. And then if something breaks, it breaks. But we use it. Now, for our 
viewers who maybe can't afford <laughs> is there is there another line that we can go to maybe because we everybody can't get Hermes but of course yeah, okay absolutely you know who has phenomenal dinnerware pieces is Target right phenomenal phenomenal pieces where you can mix and match yeah you know you can mix and match patterns solids with patterns um, different color glassware all sorts of simple things some of my go-to um, diamonds in the rough right. are like home goods I home goods home is phenomenal goods. Yes. you know for things for the home and Ross and there's all sorts of ways that people can simply improve the way they live at home I love it. Yes. Now, question. Uh -huh. Is it safe for me to use a napkin? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is it okay. Yes. So no paper towels. No but, uh, paper towels. No paper towels. Do not <laughs> offer anybody a paper towel <laughs> when they do, go to your home. Right. And even if it, because you know they started making paper towels with prints on it and all that stuff. But okay, so from that look, I know. No paper towel. But you can <laughs> use a napkin. A napkin. Right. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. So you have your lifestyle yes. that you're doing. Yes. And then you also, where can we find you? So, because, you know, it's wedding season. Yes, it and is. And, you know, another product that I released that has taken off in such a big way, mm -hmm. praise God, is uh, my bridal cuffs. So I started doing these cuffs. Um, I originally did one for Jennifer Williams with Basketball Wives uh -huh. and then Evelyn Lozada and most recently Tamara Barney wore one for her wedding. But you know, a cuff is really the evolution of the bridal bouquet. And oh. here's my thinking on a bridal bouquet mm -hmm. is that a woman goes out, she gets engaged, right? Mm -hmm. She starts looking for her dress, the most important decision that she's going to make in the planning process. And then she finds a gorgeous dress and she's probably overspending on it because mm. you can't put a price tag on looking good. Right. We will spend whatever we need to spend to feel good about it. So she's probably overspending and average women spend anywhere from three to $5,000 on a wedding gown. Yes. And then they go to a florist and order a $200 bouquet. And then they hold this enormous thing right in front of them as they're walking down the aisle and it's covering up all the most beautiful mm. and intricate details on their gown. Mm. Why do that? Why let your flowers be the star of the show? So my cuffs are really a hands-free option and that allows women to wear a beautiful accessory that's beaded, that has orchids on it, and it's gorgeous, but it's not in the way of people seeing the bride as she walks down the aisle for the first time. I love, see, then that's setting trends right there, right? Setting the trends, right? Setting the trends, right? right? <laughs> I love that. Yes, and they're doing very, very well. So I'm very grateful. Although I'm selling more cuffs to brides in Europe than I am in the U.S. Really? Yeah. Very interesting, you know, and I think it's just, it's, again, it's a telling sign about where our fashion trends come from. They right. don't come from the U.S. They come from Europe. And so they're always been the leaders, I think, in terms of style. Mm -hmm. So that it's exciting. It's an exciting time. I love it. What other tips do you have for brides? One of the things that I personally don't like is cocktail hour. <laughs> <laughs> Be Why? Because you're mm -hmm. just, there's, they, they're just standing there yes. for an hour. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. What, have, what tips can you give mm -hmm. some of our brides on what to do for your guests? Because I always say, your guests are so, as, as important as yes. your special day. Yes. Because if they're bored, they're going to go home. They're going to go home. Absolutely. They're going to eat, and then that's it. Yes, so, I agree. You know, so you have to keep them entertained. And yes. I know they try different things. But what are some of the options that you can suggest? Well, you know, the number one rule for cocktail hours is to make them interactive. Okay. Make sure that they are interactive. And when I mean interactive, it's not just about food and a bar and entertainment, but what again what can people do while they're at this cocktail reception a lot of times people save all everything for the reception which i think is a mistake and at the cocktail reception if you're going to have a photo booth put it at the cocktail reception mm -hmm. you know if you're going to have an interactive you know craft area where people can go and get henna tattoos put it at the cocktail reception also i think brides fail to assign a host for their cocktail reception and what i mean by that is the bride and groom and probably their immediate families are away taking photos. Yes. So that's why we have the cocktail reception so they don't miss the party. They can rejoin the party. But they don't assign anyone to act as a proxy or yeah. a host on their behalf. And it shouldn't be me. 
you know, right. I can do it as right. the wedding planner, but it really shouldn't be me. It should be a close friend or an aunt or a godmother or, you know, a best friend or something like that. Someone who's just there to greet people, to welcome them, to see if they need assistance with restroom or coat check or anything like that. And it's really about, really, the goal is to create, uh, eliminate the void in the dead space. Yes. And that's so important. Yes, it is. Because I go to so many weddings, and that's just like, oh, yes. the cocktail hour. And they're usually outside, yes. and they're usually on cement. And guess what? My feet hurt. Yes. My and feet one, And hurt. one bar. Yes. <laughs> and one bar. Please poor don't have planning. one bar. It's right. poor planning. But I think that because brides don't know. Yes. And they think they don't know the logistics of planning the wedding. So mm -hmm. they figure, oh, okay, I have 150 guests. I'll just have one bar. Yes. But then you have that long line. It's awful. It's awful. It's more effective for a cocktail reception. Instead of doing a full premium bar that is um, insufficiently stocked with staffing to handle that, just do tray past white wine mm. or sangria, spritzer, or sparkling water. Like, it's better to just do one thing, but then have 10 to 12 or 15 waiters circulating that throughout the space so that people are not, again, waiting in a long line on concrete with their feet hurting and they're hot and sweaty. Right. <laughs> if we have an outdoor <laughs> wedding. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. And what you have so many things going on and i know <laughs> i do and i love the cufflinks and i'm like okay what else do you have what else do you, can you share I with know. us I know. that you have going on so just your cufflinks and your speaking yes and your lifestyle yes the products um i've got a couple of weddings um one out of the country that'll mm. be later this year which is very exciting i always love working out of the country because it continues to stretch me Mm, you know, mm -hmm. I can do a party down the street almost with my eyes closed. Right. But send me to another country where I don't speak the language. Now I'm excited. You oh, know? wow. Now I'm excited because I get to figure it out, you know. So we have that happening later this year. I also have more speaking engagements. Um, later this year I have, uh, I have three engagements in Mexico. I have one in Dubai. Uh, I have one in Moscow, Russia. Mm. Um, and I have one in Ireland. So... Talk about, you know, God enlarging my territory. I, I, I'm loving this. It's, it's, really, it's really amazing. And the more I travel the world and the more that I interact with our industry and other parts of the world, I realize that the world is so big, but yet it's really small at the same token. Right. You know, and I think as the U.S., we... We feel like we're such the leaders because we are the biggest. Yes. But just because we're the biggest country doesn't mean we're always the best because there are some amazing, phenomenal other designers and artisans in other parts of the world that are really creating weddings that even make me go, wow. Really? Yes. And it's always hard to, to make another wedding planner yes. go, wow. It's very hard to impress me. <laughs> right? I'm a snob. I'm a design <laughs> snob for sure. I love it. Thank you so much for being with Thank me today you. and sharing your story and inspiring our viewers. Thank you. Thank you so and much for having me. You're welcome. And to find more information on Diane Valentine, you can find her at dianevalentine.com and you can also have her on Twitter. You're yeah. also on Twitter and she's at Diane, but please it's D-I-A-N-N -N, Valentine at Twitter. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with me today on Black Hollywood Lives Phenomenal Women. I look forward to inspiring you next week. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.